Hey everyone, Zach here from Windows Central and welcome back to another video. Now today we're taking a look at Windows 11 build 26200.5661. It's been a while since our last video, uh, but I figured this build was a good one to jump back in and take a look at some of the new features Microsoft is working on for Windows 11. So let's start with Windows Recall. If you're using a Copilot Plus PC, you'll soon see a brand new Recall app, which now includes a home page or home tab, whatever you want to call it. So here's the new landing page. It's says good afternoon along the top as well as the date and a search bar and then below that you get recent snapshots as well as your top three most used apps or websites for the day so this is over a 24 hour period you can see here it says youtube.com you've spent 19 minutes on this activity settings you've spent seven minutes and audiojungle.net you've spent two minutes and if we jump into any one of these it will show you all of the snapshots you've sort of collected in this app over the last 24 hours so we can click on here and then it will go into even more uh, detail in regards to what snapshots it has and then you can click on one here to take a look at that in more detail so this will take me back to yesterday as you can see and you can see this is the snapshot it has taken so the timeline interface is still here along the top as you can see and you can scroll all the way back through your snapshots like so or you can use the new home tab which will give you a sort of curated overview of your most used apps and websites as well as recent snapshots here uh, you can delete snapshots from this interface as well so if you right click on this for example and go down to delete we can choose to delete this individual snapshot or all of the snapshots collected within this particular app or website in this case settings so if we go there and delete delete all snapshots you'll see this snapshot plus 24 other ones will be permanently deleted from your PC and this can't be undone so if I press on delete there it will remove all of them uh, with the click of a button which is kind of nice now if we go down to settings we have the option to clear our search history and turn off search history uh, as well as the main recall settings page in the Windows settings app which allows you to configure how snapshots are collected and all of that good stuff of course you can still filter apps and websites so if you don't want anything showing up in the recall homepage, you can stop those apps and websites showing up through here. So that's a quick look at the new Recall app. Pretty nice. Again, exclusive to Copilot Plus PCs. If you don't have a Copilot Plus PC, you won't be seeing that app or any of its changes. Speaking of Copilot Plus PCs, there's another new feature for Copilot Plus PCs, and that's this new search bar along the top here. Microsoft calls this the AI agent for settings, and what it essentially allows you to do is use natural language to configure settings on your computer. So this is handy for people who don't frequent the Windows settings app often and are struggling to find a particular thing they want changed. So for example, if I wanted to turn Bluetooth on or off, I would just type Bluetooth and you'll see here the AI agent is able to pull the setting up straight into the search result and I can apply the option to turn Bluetooth on in this case because it's already off. So if I do that, Bluetooth should now be enabled and then I can undo that if I want. You can also use natural language. So if you may, if you don't know the particular name of a function you want changed, so for example, I don't want dark mode on anymore, so I just want to make my apps light ideally we should get the option yep so light theme settings there and if we click on that it will take us to the page where i can configure that which is kind of nice so yes using natural language to configure settings on windows um a big change really again exclusive to copilot plus pcs uh, we can try this one my mouse pointer is too small which was the suggested one in the search bar and yep increase mouse cursor size if i apply that you'll see that my mouse cursor is now larger as well as a bunch of different options down here if that's not the exact one you're looking for so very nice and there's also a show all results one and you can see here it says use your own words to search describe what you'd like to do like connected device or what you want to adjust like screen is too dark let's try that one actually so if we go back home screen is too dark <laughs> no results for screen is too dark so this is beta software i have noticed that sometimes it just doesn't do what you ask it to do um but uh, most of the time it works fine um but yeah there's still some improvements to be made with this search bar along the top and so there we are i'm going to keep my cursor large because i think it looks awesome uh, and while we're in the settings app let's go to another new change and feature microsoft is testing if we go into notifications and scroll down to the very bottom there's now an option to change the position of on-screen indicators like volume brightness and other controls so by default microsoft uh, puts the volume indicator at the bottom middle it's been here since windows 11 version 22 h2 People have been asking to be able to move it around and Microsoft has finally answered our prayers. So if we go back into settings here, you'll see there is the option between bottom center, top left and top center. 
I don't know why top right wasn't an option, but <laughs> top left and top center are the only two options you have here in addition to the traditional position of bottom center. So if we set it as top left and then adjust our volume, you'll see it shows up in the top left like so. And again, if we go to top center and minimize, you'll see, yep, it is there, top center, and I pressed the wrong button, sorry about that. But there it is in the top center. And that is kind of cool. This is kind of handy for those of you using tablets where the volume controls are on the top of the device, uh, especially on the Surface Pro. I believe the Surface Pro, they are on the top left. And so I see, I can see why they've added an option to put it up in the top left. Uh, but yeah, if you're somebody who's never liked it down at the bottom center, you now have the choice of top center or top left, which is kind of cool. Okay, moving on, if we jump into the start menu, there's an additional feature to the new start menu that, that I wanted to highlight that I didn't highlight in my last video, and that's the addition of this phone link panel. So we can now, on the fly, show and hide the phone link companion uh, just by pressing this button here, and it works like you would expect. You can see I actually don't have phone link set up here, but here's what phone link normally looks like when it's configured uh, correctly, and I can now hide that just by pressing the button, which is pretty cool. And you get a nice little animation while you do it as well. There's still a huge discrepancy between the two panels uh, of search and start. As you can see, if I click on the, the search box up here, there's a jarring transition <laughs> between the two. Um, I really don't like that. And I hope Microsoft addresses that because it's kind of terrible and uh, they haven't addressed it as yet, uh, but it is what it is. Um, right, now let's jump into File Explorer. Uh, Microsoft is making a couple of quality of life improvements here. First of all, again, if you're on a Copilot Plus PC, you'll soon notice a new AI actions uh, menu, which allows you to basically jump straight into the click to do actions without having to open click to do. So this is handy because, uh, you know, if click to do is open and an image is on screen, yep, you get these options. But that image isn't always on screen. For example, it's not on screen here. And so click to do wouldn't actually see the ability to show these options. But uh, via the file explorer you can quickly jump into them like so and so if i wanted to arrange objects with photos i can click on that and it will take me straight into the photos app into that mode where i can choose to um, erase parts of this image so let's remove this circle here and just like that it's mostly gone <laughs> a tiny bit left but yeah you get the point you can now quickly jump into ai actions straight through the file explorer which is kind of nice Right clicking on the file, there's, there's also been a further UI update to the actions along the top here. Uh, these actions have a long history on Windows 11. When Windows 11 first debuted, they were just icons. And if I remember rightly, they were at the bottom of the menu. They were really hard to discover. A lot of users couldn't find them. Uh, and so Microsoft later made them bigger and added labels and put them at the top of the menu. Uh, and now they've added dividers between each of the buttons. So they stand out even more now. So between cut, copy, rename, share, delete, there is a subtle divider, which makes them distinct and individual from each other and that is a nice little change. Uh, but while we're here, let's click on the share button because some improvements to the share UI have been made on Windows 11 as well. So you can see we have the option now to adjust the quality of the image we're sharing. Uh, straight through the interface, which is kind of nice, and that should change the size of it. So you can see there, the original image is only 103 kilobytes, but I can make it even smaller, 24 kilobytes, by selecting the low option, which is kind of cool. And even more than that, there's an option to quickly edit the image before you send it straight through the share charm. So if we open this up here, you can see uh, we get a sort of mini version of the Photos app and I can make an edit here. And as far as I'm aware, this edit only applies to the image we're editing within the share window. The original file is untouched. So if I crop this like so, done and apply, that image has now been cropped. But if I close this and go and open the original image, you'll see that the original image is unharmed. So that's really nice, very handy. If you go to quickly share an image and realize you need to make a quick adjustment, but you don't want to touch the original file, you can do that straight through the share charm, which is very nice indeed. Oh, there's a couple more settings that I forgot to show you. So if we go back into settings here, into the date and time area, you'll see that there is now an option to show the time in the notification center. So by default, this isn't a thing. You can see it just shows the date. Uh, but if you turn this on, and then go back here, you'll see, oh my goodness, the time is there as well, as well as the seconds. So that's really nice. Uh, and that's actually restoring functionality from Windows 10, believe it or not. Windows 10 has had this forever. And Windows 11 is finally getting it back, which is kind of cool. So another feature Microsoft is adding is the ability to show additional clocks in the system tray, uh, in the flyout anyway. Again, I believe this was a Windows 10 feature that's finally making a return to Windows 11. So if we go in here and press change, we can choose the time zone. So let's say Eastern Standard Time and let's call it uh, New York. Press change. 
you'll see that we now have an additional clock. And if we go down to the flyout, you'll see that New York, as well as the time in New York, appears there. And you can have up to two of those in the flyout, so we can add a different one here. So we, if we add a second one here, we can do that, and then you'll see that, yep, New York is 8.48, and Seattle is 5.48 in the morning. Wow, very early indeed. But you can get to see those times there now in the flyout, which is kind of handy. Now, I can't remember if I showed this off in a previous build. I'm going to quickly show it off again. Um, but Microsoft has actually made some changes to the battery indicator. It's now wider, which is nice. Uh, but in addition to that, uh, they've also added the ability to show your battery percentage. I am pretty sure I have shown this off before. But I figured why not show it off again because it's kind of cool. Look at it. You can see we have our battery percentage there. And it's always present in the taskbar. And it looks kind of nice. So there we are. That's a quick look at Windows 11 build 26200.5661. Thank you so much for watching and we shall see you in the next one. Bye bye.